Just a brief note before we begin, unfortunately, due to circumstances I still haven't been able to determine, possibly cosmic rays, the audio from the mics didn't record and I've been forced to use the camera audio. So please enjoy the fact that you know that we don't know the mics aren't recording. Because you're traveling right now, right? This is I am first traveling time, right now, yeah. First time you've been back to New York since... Since probably a year and a half, two years. Like okay. Before the pandemic, I was here for like a week. For and weeks. this is not just like a visit to New York, like you drew, drove cross country. We drove cross country, yeah. We were like, why not just like have end of the year kind of like bang banger of a, <laughs> of yeah. a vacation. Um, and but do you, do you think that like traveling is like, do you have this like sense of urgency to like move I often? do, I do, yeah, yeah. it's funny like, after, I feel like five years, I spend five years in its place. Yeah. And then I'm like, I got this itch to like, all right, I gotta, I gotta pack up and go somewhere else. Do you think that's like from your childhood? I think it might have been from my childhood. Now that you yeah. mention it, like we 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 did kind of do like five years stints in different cities, and huh. and as an adult, I sort of followed that pattern. I lived, yeah. lived in New York. I mean, New York was was like ten years on and off. How long is it in LA now? LA will be three years uh, next March. So like two and, a, two and a half years, basically. Well, you know, we were talking about New York and like, so let's just gloss over this idea. I don't want to like, you know, we already kind of talked about it in depth, but excuse me, you kind of serendipitously got offered this job through like a mutual friend mm -hmm. at Levi's doing Embroidery, doing embroidery, right. and and like ta like basic tailoring, yeah. hemming or whatever. And had you had any experience doing that prior? I had a little experience in sewing. I grew up like right, three right. sisters. We also like would sew and make things. Um, a lot of times by hand, sometimes with machines. So, so I, the, I like got the principles of it. The embroidery thing was not like the embroidery thing. I didn't know existed. I didn't. Even know yeah, anything. right. So it wasn't like hey, Wells, like you should do this because. Because you're good at it, yeah, yeah. Or you know anything about it. No, it's literally like, like you know how to draw, so yeah. it would probably translate into just like embroidery. So what made you take that job? Not um, I I needed the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like you really needed the job. I um worked a bunch of odd jobs in all the towns. I mean, but you've also kind of always. I mean, we met at American Apparel. I must right. say that that's like you know something great in the fashion industry, but like, it, it seems was a like fun you, job. Was yeah, cool. but you've always been kind of, I mean, you, you're obviously like, you know, you wear interesting clothing, you're an interesting looking guy, like, I mean, fashion, as you were saying before, such a, yeah, a huge interest in fashion. That's like a thing, right? So yeah. like, taking a job at Levi's was probably not the weirdest thing in the world. No, it kind of made sense. It was like, I, I when I was in San Francisco, I, while I was working on American Apparel, I was like, uh, helping some friends out who had like a, um, a denim brand, where they would like make, it was like, which, which I, it was called Jackknife. Oh. Jackknife Outfitters. It was a really small operation. Oh, had two guys and they would like make like they were cool, really yeah. cool like high quality jeans from like scratch basically all yeah. by hand or whatever. Um, they didn't have like a factory. It was all like one person making them. Uh -huh. So like I had a really really a big interest in like how garments are like constructed. I yeah. like the process, like seeing how things are made. Um, so I did have a little bit of like. I don't know if you say like a fashion background, but I had an interest. There's like an interest, yeah, yeah, right. So I mean, that wasn't the weirdest thing. But when you showed up and you started doing it, yeah, I kind of picked it up pretty quickly. Yeah. It was, it's like, um, I feel it's one of those things I think anyone can do if you put in the time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's literally just figuring out how to, how a machine works. It's like learning how to drive a car. Maybe a little bit harder than learning to drive a car, but it's similar in theory or whatever. Well, you were saying that you know when you do your work, it's mm -hmm. like very laborious, like it's backbreaking. you're bent over. Like it's, it's not a fun process, it's really not a fun yeah. process. So what is it about it that, you know, you do that instead of, I mean, I know instead that you of, paint too, but right. like, what, what keeps you coming back? I think, I think it's like the end result. When you, when you're done with something and you can step back and look at it and you're like, wow, you know, that looks kind of cool. And yeah. it's made out of thread, I don't know, something different. It really has, I mean, Inherently, it has like a three dimension. Like, there's a texture to it. But like, yeah. when it all comes together, I mean, even the photos that you put, because I've never seen any of your pieces in person. Like, it has this, what is that? Je ne sais quoi or whatever. You know, it has this like yeah, thing yeah. about it that like is yeah, really captivating. Thanks, yeah. And it's one of those things that uh, also like in person, 
is a completely different experience because the different if you like say you put it on the wall and you walk from left to right and looking at it, it actually like it's the way that the light hits it, it changes. There's all these sorts of cool textures to it. The way you might fill in an object, there's different techniques you can use that give a different look. It's yeah, the like I don't know the technical aspect of it is pretty cool too. I just I mean I think it's so cool that you know you you had no idea that something like this existed and it came to you you know uh, unprovoked like you just kind of fell into it and discovered something that's like yeah it's so weird. cool I, yeah I mean I, you know I, we were talking about like keeping an open mind and like doing part-time jobs and stuff which I you know I want to talk about later but like it's just kind of amazing how you know without intention you can find shit like that it, is for sure. It's one of those things if you, I don't know, keep well, your eyes open and are, are willing to like go out of your comfort zone a little bit, you yeah. might, yeah, your, your path, your tra trajectory in life. Well, I don't want to glass it because I mean, there's obviously a little bit more detail to it because you started it, were intrigued, but you were doing stuff that you didn't really love to do. No, you were doing like names and shit. It was a lot of like monograms on people's shit or people would come in with their own artwork. It was like having. I don't know, maybe like a walk-in tattoo shop on St. Mark's where people come in, they're like, I want the yeah, uh, right. Statue of Liberty, uh, you know, tattoo. But they'll come in there, I want a Statue of Liberty on my denim jacket. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to do that, but yeah. I worked for Levi's, so I couldn't say no. So I ended up doing a bunch of shit that I like, just did not, wasn't happy with doing. But it was also a great learning process. Yeah, like, right. Starting I'm off, saying, so I'm like, you know, I'll, whatever. I'll do. I'll do whatever. I mean, it really taught you how to do it. Absolutely. Too, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, it's interesting the tattooing thing because you're know, speaking to friends who are tattoo artists and my own tattoo artists. Like, I mean, as everybody knows, there's like you gotta pay your dues. It's like really Absolutely. tough industry to get into. But there's something to be said, I guess, for doing, you know, just practicing and doing shit that you don't want to do because you really round out skills uh, 100% you kind of pay your dues or whatever you know like yeah so I mean you were doing that for a while and then like you went to this like pop-up for a company in LA and then you right. ended up moving to LA and working for said company and then mm -hmm. that was around well you, in, when you were doing the pop-up you were kind of starting to work on your own stuff and yeah I would work on my own stuff um, sort of after hours or um, actually at the pop-up because the pop-up shop was in the North Face and just super slow. No one really was getting any work done, so it allowed me the freedom to just work on my own designs, stuff that I wanted to do. And you were painting already, like you were already. Yeah, I'd already doing been painting stuff. stuff. So I would actually like take photos of my of my paintings and like take them to work oh, really? and then, like try to embroider the paintings I was doing just to see how it looked. Was it just you know because you were bored? It was or bored. Like, it was like yeah, I have eight hours to sit in this pop up and might as well look busy. Yeah, um, right. You know, I'd make like a couple patches for the store to sell that no one ever bought, or and then I would just like work on my own stuff. So we, I kind of already asked this question, but what, you know, wh where was that like switch where you were doing stuff and you were like, wait, this is like kind of tight and... It was kind of immediately. Oh, really? Yeah. It was Even like, with the, like the stuff you didn't like doing? It was, when I was doing stuff I didn't like, I was like, oh, I can't, I want to do stuff, I want to do my own designs like I already had this idea of like oh I can make make artwork with this yeah with this like medium it's like a new a new type of paintbrush that I can use to like yeah. make artwork I mean that's like exciting in and of itself yeah right? I mean as a musician like when you get a new keyboard or something it's like oh it's like, a different sound whoa exactly cool. and yeah, all yeah. of a sudden you just like want to do something different sure and it just kind of jumps you before you know you're making shit that you didn't think yeah. you were going to be doing for a little while, I was like, maybe I'll do like um, my artwork on clothing because I didn't really. Yeah, right. I was like, oh, right. cl um, clothes would be cool. And then, then I was like, oh yeah, I can actually like do this on canvas and and stretch it over stretcher bars and make it something here on your wall. What's the difference? Do you think that gra you know you tend to gravitate towards? I think the canvas. I think it's um, I don't know. It sort of like elevates the the product if you want to call it that. Clothing is kind of more dis disposable. It's like how you wear it until it falls apart. I think it's something beautiful in that. It yeah, does yeah, have yeah. like a beginning end to like clothing, or you could recycle it and turn something different. But yeah. with something you hang on your wall, it it could last hundreds and hundreds of years. I guess the intent too is that it just sits. It's not like 
it doesn't have like a dual function. Like right, it's it's literally right. just to look at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, mean, I don't know. It's not, I like I like that idea of it. It's just with painting too. I think I don't know. Clo- do not do it on clothes still for for work. I yeah, think, right. Freelance, you know, right. make extra money, but ideally, I would just do stuff that you wear. Or sorry, stuff that you hang stuff on, you not, and not stuff that you wear. Um. Well, yeah. Let me, let me ask you. Because there, there's this element of we were talking about. It's kind of like the trades work almost. I mean, it's like it's like a skill, right? In order, right. Like you learn how to do it, and it's like a technique. And where where is this like kind of uh, crossroads? Where because you do a lot of portraits that we were talking about, and it seems like you do. I mean, I've seen even in your paintings today. Like I was looking through your stuff today, and like there's um, it's like scenes. I mean, it's very like. Uh, evocative of like an essence of you know like a slice of life or like a person and like how they look and stuff like that where, like where does the compulsion to capture that stuff come from and where and where is that crossroads between that and embroidery because it seems like embroidery almost takes it like one more level because it adds this like extra dimension to what seems like to me already a very interesting you know illustration or whatever you want to call it Sure. Well, thanks for that. Um, I, I would say the, the the subject matter of my stuff comes from. I, that's a really good question. I don't really know. It's almost like just things you see in daily life that you. I I always want to like, um, capture a sense of like comfort. A lot mm. of times it's like someone just hanging out in their house. Yeah. Someone just like enjoying the day. Um, so. I don't know. I guess it's like. It's have have you see. you've always been doing stuff like that? Like. I don't know. I think it's something newer. Um, in the past, like maybe fifteen years. When I was a kid, I would I would draw like houses and more outdoor scenes. But nowadays, I I prefer doing people in normally in their home. Mm. And I think that I don't know something something about people's houses. Like even looking around here, it's it, it's, yeah. it's like it tells so much about. So much more about a person than just looking at them. When you come into someone's space, yeah, for can, sure. Yeah, it's like walking in someone's brain a little bit. Totally, man. Yeah, I, I, yeah, totally resonate with that because I think, I think especially for somebody like me who's like more of a homebody and spends a lot of time at home, like this is my temple. You know, like mm-hmm. this is my. You know, I spend most of my energy maintaining and like building this yeah. over anything else. Over it is. I, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's, that's a good way to put it. It really is an extension. Um, yeah, man. Well, you know, I was kind of talking about this idea of traveling, and what I really wanted to ask you, now that you're in L.A., um, obviously you kind of were pulled there for work and stuff, but is there something about L.A. that is, you know, interesting to you or maybe influences your work or kind of compels you to stay or right now yeah i mean i it's compared to new york where i was living for a while it, it's i feel like it's more comfortable it's a slower pace i got more space i i like driving i learned how to drive when i was in la and i was like this is amazing yeah in my car and just put music on I yeah. really enjoy it god there's you know, the understatement of the century like there is nothing better than getting a car and listening yeah, it's like that's the coolest shit. The coolest shit. Yeah, yeah, put the windows down, smoke a cigarette, and like this is life. I'm yeah, that's happy. life. Yeah, yes, <laughs> the, the most simplest form. Yeah, I miss having a car. I got rid of mine. Obviously, I don't have one here in New York, but that was my favorite thing, especially like as a musician, because the next step, the next level above that, is getting your car and listening to your own oh, music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like that's like the test of like, all right, did I mix this totally, properly? Totally. Let's good. go in the car and find yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's just like nothing better. I mean, in what neighborhood do you live in? I, in? in Lincoln, I live in Lincoln Heights in Los Angeles. And it's like East LA. is, I mean, have you have you found yourself like kind of becoming influenced or inspired by your surroundings? I think so for sure. I mean, there there's like. I don't know the exact history of this, so if I'm butchering it, I apologize, but someone told me there is, in Los Angeles, there's like one of the only remaining like sign painting schools where people go to learn how to become like sign painters. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, So like, for w- sure. when you walk around, like all the, the buildings have these like beautiful hand-painted signs 
for their businesses. Yeah. And that alone is just like, it, it's so beautiful. I think the architecture is really cool. Um, the weather, you can't beat it. Um, and I don't know, I, I'm finally like, living in LA, I'm like, my money goes further than yeah, New York. Right, so I'm like, right. I'll go try this new restaurant. Like yeah. this is, this looks, food looks amazing. In New York, I ate dollar pizza and like ramen yeah. noodles pretty much every day. Yeah. There I'm like, I don't know what it is. Just like your money goes further and I just feel like my life has improved living in LA. I'm sure that helps motivating you to create yeah. shit too, right? I mean, Absolutely. I'm like, oh, I have some, t- I feel like my spare time is like, I can get out of my head about being stressed about, you know, paying rent or whatever. Yeah, man. You know, that's one of those things about New York that, um, you know, moving here, I think later in life, there's so much expectations for what New York is supposed to be and there's a stereotype and stuff like that. But like, it really does feel like a hustle. And I think for some people, they like thrive on that. You know what I mean? It's like, I got to do shit. Like, I need to make rent. Like, cool. Like, let's do this. And they can really turn that into something beautiful, like creatively. For me, that is the opposite. Like, I cannot <laughs> work under that kind of circumstance. I mean, I've, I've been able to carve out my little niche here and have been able to make it work. But I think like, you know, if I was somebody like you who came here a lot younger, I mean, I say this all the time, like if I came here in my early 20s, like I would have fucking bailed fast. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think, and I've known, I've you know, I've met a few people who are a little bit younger who moved here and, um, you know, it's just, it's a whole thing. You yeah, know? It really is it a is. thing. I think part of what kept me in Europe for so long is honestly like the, the friends I made and like the party scene. I wasn't really doing anything yeah. like to progress my career while living in New York. I was for like sure. literally living to like go out and do stuff. Yeah, there's um, something to be said. For that which was too. fun, yeah. and I think I just I got that out of my system. And now when I'm older, yeah. I'm like, all right, now I'm like, let me let me focus on on the future a little bit more and less about going out and meet people. It's like, all right, I have the friends in my life that I care about. Yeah. I don't need to like do that anymore. Well, yeah, the, you know, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about because uh, you have this piece that you did. It's like a portrait of three brothers. Yeah. That's amazing. And you were telling me the other day that um, you did that kind of like as a gift because they kind of took you under their wing. And yeah, they, 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 I moved to LA without knowing anyone and they really just brought me right in. They're in embroidery in from that company too, or one of the one of the brothers, James. Okay. Yeah, the okay. middle brother. Yeah. He um he was one of the first people I met in LA, and yeah, just absolutely showed me around. Brought basically brought me into their family. Like, it made it made my transition from from New York to LA like pretty much seamless. Like I they would literally car carpool with James to work every day. I didn't have a yeah. car at the time. They helped me find an apartment. They really just like looked out for me. So I felt like it was just like a nice gesture as a. Kind of so you made, you, know, you made this piece for them. Yeah, you know, I'm curious about that idea because I've spoken to other people about, you know, my wife, for example, like she's finds this like incredible energy to make stuff for other people. But when she has to do stuff for herself, it's, you know, that, that like, it's the fire is like not there as much as it is. And sure. I mean, you, you have this interesting really? kind of dynamic, like you're a freelancer, you're working for a company, you're kind of doing all this stuff and you kind of straddle the line doing freelance to kind of pay the bills and then doing your other stuff on the side. But it's, you know, it's interesting that you did this piece, obviously coming from a place of like extreme or you know, great respect and you want to give a gift to somebody. And I, yeah, I wonder like, you know, it, do you ever, I mean, you said you were a little bit more picky and choosy you now with the people that you work with. I'm, I, I have that luxury now, yeah. um, but at the end of the day, you, like, you can't just say no to everybody. But being able to say no here and there, if it's just not worth your time or you just don't want to do the project, it's super liberating. It feels really good to do that. This may be kind of a wash of a question, but do you see that there's like a big difference between things that you do for other people and things that you do for yourself? I mean, I don't think I did quality changes. I'll do, even if it's something yeah. I hate to do, I'll put my all into it no matter what. Like yeah. I want to make it look good. Um, but like when I'm doing it, I'm like complaining the entire time. I'm like, fuck this. I can't wait to be done with this. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you gotta, you gotta get paid, so. Yeah. I mean, you know, as somebody who paints also, I mean, this idea that you're doing embroidery because it brings this new dimension to it. Um, I mean, like, what, why, uh, well, I guess we kind of already covered this, but, you know, you, 
even with the freelancing stuff. I mean, I guess that's the stuff that really just pays the bills, right? right? I mean, maybe the painting. The painting stuff, is, I just like kind of struggle with that all the time. I'm like, why do I do it embroidery? I could just paint this. It would be a lot more enjoyable. I'd probably have more fun doing it. Yeah. Why does it have to be embroidered? Like, I don't, I don't really know the answer to that. Like, is yeah. it just because it looks cool at the end, or is there something about, like, the... It's almost, like, masochistic. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, sure. breaking my back to, you know, make something. I don't I don't really know the answer. Yeah. I, I think it's, I know. know how to do it, so I might as well. At the end of the day, it's like, oh, this is something I know how to do. Why not just do it? Well, we were talking about the itch, too, right? I mean, there's always, yeah. like, this, like, compulsion to get up and... I mean, the ideas constantly flow, and you just kind of want to do something. And mm -hmm. I mean, I... There's, I, I don't know, I mean, the hard parts, they're un unavoidable in any kind of medium, I guess, that you do, um, but it's like part of it, and it's, I guess, part of the payoff, too. I mean, there's always this, you know, we keep circling around this idea of tattooing, but it's like, tat getting tattooed sucks, like, it's, it's not, like, super fun, right? right? You know, it can be enjoyable, I guess, but there's something about the process uh, and the pain mm -hmm. that, I don't know, man, you just gotta keep you going, keep going back, back, right? Yeah, it's addicting in a weird way. Yeah, I mean, that must be an element, right? I think so. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, and I think another element, which is kind of silly, and it's not a huge factor, but there is there is a bit of like a, in the like chain stitch community, a bit of like competitiveness. Oh, really? So you're like, oh, I want to be the guy who made something, did this, you know, made the biggest one, or the the craziest, like, piece. Yeah. And there's, like, that in the this tiny bit in the back of your mind where, like, all right, this is going to keep me going. Like, I'm going to... I think it's... I mean, yeah, I... <laughs> you, know? you know, the first time I really felt that, I moved in... I had a roommate who was a musician also. Still, like, a really close friend of mine. But it was the first time that I was in proximity, very close proximity... I was boring, though. Yeah. Um, proximity of somebody who was, like, extremely motivated. And just insanely talented like really gifted and skilled and it really I was like all right all right let me uh let me try a little bit harder you know like, and not not so much to say that I wanted to show him up or like do anything better but it was like I think that healthy rivalry rivalry is not really the right word but it, it, it really did like kind of push me to just try a little bit harder I think it's really important to have that stuff around. Sure. You were saying that like you have most of your colleagues or you know friends or whatever you want to call it like in LA are photographers, right? I do have a lot of photography friends. I don't know why they're yeah. And yeah. not a ton of embroidery friends or I have I know yeah, I know I mean just through through like work, I've met a lot of embroiderers, um, and a lot of them are my friends. Um, yeah. But yeah, and I do know a lot of I don't know why a lot of photographer friends as well. I mean I guess you know, we mentioned this the other day, like, there, there's a lot of overlap, I guess. I mean, it's a little bit different of a process, right? But For sure. But yeah, I don't know. They're definitely, it's definitely, I'm definitely inspired by photography. Yeah. Um, or it's not just photography in general, but certain photographers, I suppose. Um, yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I have a couple of points that I wanted to cross over, and now I'm getting a little bit lost in the um, uh, in the conversation because I just want to make sure that I cover all this stuff. Um, let me ask you just a little bit about like, well, let, let's talk about your routine sure. um, in terms of like motiv motivation and stuff like that. Um, that itch is always there. You always got to do stuff. At a certain point, you're like, you know, you kind of in earnest were like, okay, I'm doing this for real, I'm thinking about my future, this is something I really want to do. Mm -hmm. So what is like a typical day? Typical day, I wake up, I gotta wake up early, take the dog out, so yeah. I only get up around like 7.30, 8 if I'm lucky. And you say you're an evening person, right? I'm more of an evening person. Yeah. The dog has forced me to become a morning person, it's reluctant, yeah, right. but I'm there, I do it. Um, hungover or not, I'll yeah. get up, take the dog out. Uh, now I'm just, you know, shower, get ready, yeah. and then I'll go drive, get coffee somewhere. Um, kind of just like relax for the just like morning. Just like regular sit. minutia, of just nothing special. Nothing right? special. Just sit, enjoy my coffee, um, get in the car, go back home, and then I'm like, all right, what do I got to work on today? Yeah. Um, and that varies, you know. If I'm not working on a commission, then I try to get started on my own projects. 
which sometimes get distracted yeah. by the internet or whatever. But yeah, how, how do those projects typically start? Um, I normally will have an idea. But let me let me just before we move on. Yeah, that idea obviously it's impossible to kind of define it. But where where do you typically find you know like oh shit that was the thing that now I want to do. At like random times, like I'm laying, laying in bed at night and I'm like, oh, I, this is what I want to do next. Or, or if I, I don't know, I love going to the art museums and, and get inspired by what other people have made. Yeah. Um, or like little sections of it and be like, oh, I, I, can use, I can reference that. Is it mostly work. visual? It's mostly visual, yeah. Yeah, almost entirely is. Yeah. Um, and then it like, you know, jumbles up in my brain and gets regurgitated as something completely different. Is it, is it, I mean, you know, say for something like portraiture, uh -huh. you see somebody in the public, or like... <sighs> Not really. I just start drawing, and then mm -hmm. see what comes out. And never, never have I ever made anything in my entire life, I don't think, where it's came out how I envisioned it. Yeah, for sure. I like, mean, I feel like that's, <laughs> that's just part I've of never it, been right? like, this is what I'm going to make, and this is how it's going to turn out. It's never been the case. Do you find that disappointing? No, I've, I kind of like it now. I used to hate it, because I'd be like, I'm so unhappy with what I make. Yeah. It's like this is not what I had envisioned, but I think that there's something cool about like just kind of allowing it to, to change as you go, and then if you end up liking it in the end, that's cool. If not, then whatever, you just move on. Do you do you abandon ever? Yeah, sometimes. A lot of times, I'll, if I do, I'll like completely destroy it, so it can't be, it can't be seen. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, like burn it or something? Yeah, or like just chop it up or throw yeah. it out. That hasn't happened that often, but... I suppose there's something like kind of cathartic about doing that too. Yeah, I did a painting not that long ago where I literally like just smashed it and then, then ripped it apart. Mostly out of frustration, because it was one of those things where like, yeah. I just can't get this to look right. I think, you know, to be honest, there's something to be said about that. Like, because it... I was just talking to another friend about this and how little stuff like that, I mean, can seem so minuscule to other people, like, oh, this doesn't look the right way, it's like a big fucking deal, but it feels sometimes like <laughs> fucking crazy, like, yeah. it's so intense, that feeling that... You just don't even want to look at it anymore, maybe in your case you don't want to hear it anymore, or... I get really self-destructive, I mean, you know, just self-doubt, like, it's just, it's very powerful. It yeah. can be very It can bad. like ruin your like psyche. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Long period of time. I guess yeah, I mean I don't want to harp on this whole idea for too long, but the you know, it's so your sense of purpose is so ingrained and intertwined in like what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really hard to and the, you know, that one of the reasons I, I, I like talking to people about this kind of stuff is that um, you kinda of tend to forget that and, and tend to forget that it's like part of the process to like deal with failure and you know, sure. deal with things that you don't like and um, yeah. I'm slowly learning to like embrace that rather than turn the gun on myself and That's start great. And shooting more, it. Can I ask you like one of some of the ways you, how you, how you... Uh, well, you know, therapy. <laughs> therapy That's is great. a yeah, yeah. huge one. I mean, that's a good one, but I think, um, well, I just, you know, the episode before this, I talked to my friend Ailani, who's kind of on it's a very similar thing that she did. Not exactly, but she did a cross-country thing, too. Cool. And she came here to, like, work on herself. And um, I found a similar thing that she was doing where she would just, like, catch herself, you know? it's I think it's, the train runs away really quickly. Like, once that thought process starts going, it just, you know, it's really easy to get swallowed by it. Okay. And I think I've learned after quite a long period of time of trial and error, like, to recognize when that stuff happens and just kind of, like, basically eject, you know? Right, be like, okay, this is about okay, to go yeah, down. Yeah, this is about to go down, down, like, I can already feel, like, I already started saying something mean to myself, like, you're an idiot, or right. why, you know, why does this suck? And then I, uh, I just, yeah, I try to separate, but I'm learning, what do you do? If, if I, I, um, <laughs> nowadays, I try to just, it just, I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to do all the times, but just being like, this yeah. is not that big a deal, you know, like, if it didn't work out, you wake up tomorrow, you can keep moving. I mean, there's obviously times where you just down yourself, I think that's okay, you just find it. You know, I think one of the things that, and we had talked about this before when we met up, like, I think making that declaration of being like, this is who I am, and this is like what I'm doing, and it's like, I don't 
want to work some other kind of job like this is my thing and yeah. I have to do it See, for me it was like a big weight off my shoulders because I was like all right this might not work out I don't know if I'm you know going to be able to sustain myself forever but for better or worse like I have to do this mm -hmm. and it's got to be a part of my life and you know obviously coming from a place of privilege like you know a lot of people don't don't have that luxury sure but I think being able to be in a place where I can make rent and have time to do my stuff, do the things that I want to do, um, it was like, okay, this is my life, there's going to be bad parts of it, and I kind of have to embrace that and learn to deal with it, and, you know, so be it. That's, right. that's just kind of part of it. And I, I think a lot of my anxiety was like, oh, I suck, I can't do this. I can always go and do something else. Maybe I should be doing something else because this obviously is not working. And it was just always this constant push and pull of like abandoning it completely mm -hmm. or like staying and dealing with it. Right. And eventually, yeah, you kind of get to this point where you realize if you do run away, we are talking about this, right? You're just miserable. Like, it sucks. Yeah. If you don't, yeah, at the end of the day, like you want to, like that itch that we're talking about, you just have yeah. to do it. You just, just got to scratch that itch. Yeah, man, I, it's, yeah, I, I think talking to other people about it and realizing that, you know, there are a lot more similarities in terms, I don't, yeah, I mean, you lived in San Francisco for a while too, but yeah. growing up in San Francisco, it was just, everything was, you know, value-based, and it's just kind of hard to integrate into that mindset when you don't care about the return, I guess. I don't know, but you know, for you, it's like you, you, you're one of the, one of, oh, I don't want to say a few, I know quite a few people like this, but you have, I guess, at least for right now, chosen to do what you do without any kind of side hustle that's like unrelated, right? I mean, you... Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna like, answer. yeah, I might, I might look for like a restaurant job or something just for extra money and for like social interaction that we... I think that might be fun. Um, obviously, I have to make rent. Right now, I've been like doing unemployment here and there. Right. So that's over. So I'm gonna have to like it's time to get a job. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm going and, and hustle with the freelancing as much as I can, which I can probably if I like put my nose to the grind, make that work. I just gotta like kind of get in that mindset. Did right the pan now. did the pandemic change anything for you in terms of how you work or the way you see your work? Yeah, I mean, it like really allowed me to like work on my own stuff. Yeah. I feel like I don't know. This must have happened for a lot of people. Yeah, it's like okay, I'm getting paid by the government. A lot of times more than what you may have made at your other job. Right. Um, so why not like yeah, I can. And that wasn't on vacation. I didn't feel like a vacation. I was still working. You know, it felt. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I have time now to like work on my own things. I got a dog. I was like, there's. I have way more free time. I guess I kind of didn't really think that through. It was going to end eventually, and now now it is. But that's a good point, though, that I think that you brought up because I have always had a hard time looking at what I do as work, and you know, telling other people like, "Oh, I've been working all day," when it's like you're not getting paid, right? Right. You know, it's like right, right. It's really, but it really does um, when you do it in earnest. Like it is work. It really 100%. is work. You, like, yeah. you put in the time and the effort, and you get exhausted and. Um, Finding that value within yourself is one of the things that I found during the pandemic. You know, yeah. Like I would, because I, I felt the same. I mean, there, you know, there was a long stretch where I didn't do anything, but eventually I started working on projects. Yeah. And I feel like now um, I am insanely busy. I mean, I just like, you know, I'm just like constantly doing shit. I mean, it must be the same for you, because I mean. I, I assume, do you do this stuff every day? Pretty much, yeah. I'll do it pretty much every day. And it, it's really time consuming, so like to do one, you know, maybe something this large can take all, all day. And if you're trying to f make something that's 10 times that, then you know, that can take a couple weeks. So yeah, I mean, it does, I do, I am very busy. And on top of that, like having a social life or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I feel like I don't have, it doesn't feel like I have all this free time necessarily, but I am, am enjoying my time more because I'm doing yeah. stuff that I like to do. We kind of jumped a little bit, but <clears throat> when we were talking about the routine, 
you start working kind of in the afternoon or whatever, mm -hmm. and you work until a certain point because the, the the machine's loud. I'm only going. I try to be finished around like nine, maybe ten at the latest. Yeah. Um, and you said when you go to bed is when. That's when like inspiration strikes. So I try to like capture that, maybe write it down, or just try to remember, which I normally just try to remember and then I forget. Um, but but yeah, then I'll wake up, kind of feeling refreshed, and then I can apply what you, I. You you were also saying, if I'm not mistaken, that you will like paint or draw to capture ideas. Yeah, I'll do that in my sketchbooks. Right. Yeah, I normally like draw out the idea when thinking before I like dedicate you know, a big canvas. So I'll try to sketch it out. When you when you look at your work, is it something that is you know just ever present, always, whether you're sitting there at the machine or not, always there, or is it something that you do specifically? Like you show up, you start doing it, and that's that. Like, do you shut off? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, it's, sometimes it's hard to get in the zone to like start something. Um, but once I'm like, once I get started, it sort of starts to like unravel and, and fall into place. Do you ever deal with, uh, for lack of a better term, writer's block? Oh yeah, all the time. Definitely. What do you do? Um, <laughs> lately, I've been trying not to do this anymore, is I just do nothing and yeah. wait for inspiration to strike, which I think is not the way to do it. I need to like start working on more of like a, a routine where I like say you get up and write every day in the morning. Yeah. I should dedicate an hour of my day, no matter what, feeling inspired or not, to like drawing. I think that's important. But it's, I really yeah, it's that. interesting because I, I found, you know, you have this like routine if you want to call it. Every morning you get up, you have coffee. Um, I feel like that's because you know I, I found the opposite. Doing nothing has actually been. Uh, the greatest like liberation for me. Really, I think yeah because um, you know there's always this like idea of justifying your time. Um, I I've, I've learned to let go of that, but for a long time it was like if I'm not doing something I'm wasting time, and if there's no inspiration I gotta make inspiration, mm -hmm. you know. And I found that to be the antithesis. So it puts a lot of pressure on. Yeah, just it's like you you start coming up with ideas out of desperation and it's not so much that they can't be good. I don't think I'm good at doing that because I think that there's just so much pressure to make something that I don't find um, myself latching on. Like I, I don't I don't have like a, uh, an emotional attachment to it as much as like, oh, I just need to do this for the sake of doing it. I think there are other ways and I think, you know, getting up every morning and doing something routine, whether it's artistically inclined or not, is really helpful. I think, you know, that's why I'm an advocate for like exercise or meditation sure. or run, you know, whatever it is. Um, like I get up and write, but I think the most productive times I have are, because I have a similar thing. Like I get up and write no matter what, but I do the bulk of like, I think the real, working whether it's songwriting or whatever in the afternoon, mm -hmm. it's like, and I'm just like six hours to do whatever. Right. And before it was like six hours to get shit done. And now it's more like six hours of, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. It's kind of nice. I think that's, I found that to be better. Yeah. For me. Uh, but I know there are some people, maybe you're like this, that, I mean, really thrive under pressure. I feel like I do well under pressure. I do feel like I do well under pressure, but I, at the same time I hate it, and I'm like, I don't want the pressure. Well, we were talking yeah, about lazy. this, like, know. kind of nebulous goal, you want to have, you're working towards, like, a show, right? Yeah, yeah. There's no, like, That's, kind of details, but you want to have... Yeah, I feel like I have never had an art show, and why not build a, a collection for an art show? Does that feel, like, feels, pressure? Like, yeah, it, it does, but I'm also, like, a professional perfect procrastinator, uh, yeah. so I'm like, oh, I got time. Spring next year, no worries. Uh, yeah. Then I'm like, oh yeah, it's only in like six months. How much work do you produce? I mean, it's a hard, hard question to ask. I'm not super familiar with the visual arts, but well, let's just say, generally speaking, yeah, you know. Or let me ask you that that uh, portrait you did of your three friends. Yeah. How long did that take? That took me about a month. Were um, you working from a photograph, or that was just? No, that was I. I had 
photo references for how they looked. Yeah. Um, but, but you, you put I put them in, the, in those in those places and like everything was yeah. It wasn't like I set them down, photographed them sitting like that. And then, no, I just had like from pictures of their faces. Yeah. How long did that idea take to form before you started working? I kind of just knew media. I was like, I want them in a in sort of a sit, similar setting to how I do my paintings. Like they're in a room. But even before that, like I mean, obviously these people are really close to you, but. When did that idea, like, oh, I want to do something for them? Oh, I don't this know. This is what I want to do. I'm not entirely sure. Um, just one day, I think I just had it. Right, had the right. idea. Yeah, I don't know. I can't like think of when I thought about it, but do you do you happen to know what the timeline was between that initial thought and probably about four or five months? So it wasn't yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna do this, and I sat down the next day and did it. It yeah, was like, for I was sure. like, I'm gonna do this, and then you know, life happened, and I got caught up in other things. That's think, normally how it goes, I feel like, for my work. Some, that's interesting to know, yeah. I think some people strike when the iron's hot. Yeah. And then other, I know for the writing, it's a lot of fucking off and doing nothing. Yeah. You know, and really like, there are bits, I mean, it's like a cloud, like there's one thing and you, it's, it just takes a long time for the pieces to congeal until you get something where you're like, okay, now there's something to start working on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some people can do it faster, I don't know. And then, so when you start working, what's the actual time? I mean, how long does it take to do, like, what, what size is that canvas? That was about two feet tall by like maybe one and a half feet. It was maybe, I don't know, yeah, put it two and a half yeah. feet tall. Um, and that, yeah, that took about, you know, I don't know, it's like a hundred and something hours to do it. Um, wow. pretty much working Monday through Friday for at least four hours a day on it. Yeah, for so it takes some time. It takes some time. So if you're thinking about doing this series or you know, do, doing a show, like, how many pieces do you want to have? I think I want to have around like ten. Um, probably like three larger scale ones and then like seven small ones. So what's the short term goal? Um, that would probably be the short term goal. That's in like a couple the show. months. The show. The long term goal. Well, I mean, in terms of the show, short term, like. Oh, like are, really? you, are you strategizing? Like, okay, I'm. <laughs> no, you just. You I'm just going like I'm just gonna start. I think when I get back from this trip, I think this trip has been a nice like. Take my mind. I haven't really been thinking about yeah. art or anything like that. Yeah. I've just been like absorbing what's around me and like oh, I'm, I'm on vacation. This has been it's nice. important to like get that refresher. Yeah. Sometimes you get too sucked into it. Totally. I think, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm monomaniacal, so I just get, you know, that my life is that, and I start to lose the greater vision after a while, and I, like, it's not so much burnout as it is, I work, 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 work for three weeks, maybe a month, and then I'll take two, three, four days off and just sit on TikTok and do, and do nothing. nothing. Yeah. Just <laughs> nothing. Like I won't read, I won't do anything. Like, that's, that's, I think I'm <laughs> sort of similar in that sense where I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, I I can turn my brain into work mode and just go until whatever, I, that's why I, like, I feel like I'm good at procrastinating. I'm like, all right, I gotta do this tomorrow. I'll do it. I, I'll finish something that I could, maybe would have taken a week to do and five hours if I have to. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, you know, the, the, the reason I mentioned that it's not burnout, I think it's more like zeal, you know, it's like I lose just the electricity, the like spark that makes me want to do it because I just get so into it that I need to step away and like remember why I'm doing it and like what the reason is, you know? Yeah. It starts to like lose focus that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think when I do get back from this trip, I'll I'll really like start hammering out the idea of it and like more of like a, I don't know. I want it to be cohesive. I want there to be like the, a reason for the show. Or maybe not a reason, but like, you know, some, something that ties all the pieces together. But you don't really have an idea of what? Kind of, I think I'll do yeah. probably, probably portraits. Portraits. I'm deciding if I want to do real people or not real people or, I don't, that's still up in the air. I mean, Is it the kind of thing that's up in the air and you'll wait to see where it comes from, or do you work, like, do you try to figure out what that is? I think I will just sort of, like, 
I think I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna cut out five canvases, just lay them down on the floor, and just see what. <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've, if I've learned anything over the past several years, it's like you just gotta go and start and yeah. do something, yeah. and not over intellectualized concepts. Yeah, I don't think that I. I'm not for for me as far as an artist. I don't. I, I'm not like that. I don't. I don't have a crazy backstory behind what it depicts me and what it represents. I think it's up to the viewer to see. You're just gonna have I think that's cool if you do, if you do. For me, it's just not the way to work. I don't know. Have you tried working on? I tried and I hate the outcome. I'm like, yeah. like everything I'm making is like way too late. It's like it's pretentious. I'm like, why didn't like I wouldn't draw a person like that normally, but now I'm changing the way I'm looking so that way I can like try to like make it mean something that. And like, well, also like, why? Why am I doing that? Like, why does it have to mean something? Yeah. I don't know. These are questions I don't have answers for. But yeah, I guess you don't. You don't always really need to have. I mean, it, sometimes it's as simple as a feeling. I. I mean, what I. I suppose advocate always is like try it. You know. Sure. Don't well, maybe. Try it. I mean. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm not trying to shit on it at all. I think that if people work it that way, it's incredible. Because sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Uh, to make it sound like that. I. I. What I was saying was, it seems like you did try it. It didn't work. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm gonna try it again. Maybe, yeah. maybe, and I think maybe subconsciously there is some some meaning in what I do. I just don't really have the answers. Well, it's I mean very clear that it's you. I mean, there's style, right? So it's yeah. maybe it's not because you know the stuff that you have on your Instagram. It's like that all, all goes together. You were talking about color theory and like palette and stuff like that, and I, it. Seems like maybe that's something that's just ingrained without having to overthink it. Yeah. It's just kind of there. That's, I mean, that's cool. I, I appreciate that idea of the visual arts because it's, um, I guess, kind of more tangible in that way, up to interpretation. Yeah, I like leaving it up to the interpretation. And yeah, I think that's, it just like allows a person to see it, not to feel like, oh, I have to see it this way, I can, I can interpret it however I want. Um, uh, sorry to change gears really quickly, but what do you think success is? Do you, th do you think you're successful? I feel successful in lots of ways, maybe not financially right now, um, but I feel very successful in the relationships in my life. I feel very successful in the um, choices I've made, I suppose. Are you satisfied? I feel... Yeah, creative side. I yeah, I think it's a growing thing. I think it's like I'm not like, oh, I'm I'm I'm, not, I'm done. You know, I feel yeah. like it's it, it's something I'm gonna constantly try to improve and work on. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty exciting too to like um, consider that potential. Like, where is this gonna go? Yeah, How for sure. Transform. Because right now it's like nothing. I mean, nothing in the sense that it, it's the world hasn't seen it. I suppose, and I think that would be cool. I would like to share it with more people. And I think of having it in galleries kind of allows you that opportunity. We were talking about your family before. Are they supportive? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you generally have support? I do, yeah, which is really, really nice. Um, and I kind of always have. No one's, a lot of people, like their motivation has been to like, oh, no one believed in me, I need to succeed. Which I think can be a huge motivator. And I, I, sometimes I wish I had that. So yeah. I think it can push people to, to just go to the next level. Um, but no, I've like always had so much support. It's funny as that, a kid, since the way that you phrase that because it's like you know I, I'm so intrigued by the serendipity of how you found this, and it's like um, it seems like that pushed you to the next level. You know, that like opened this. It's door kind of it. It's like oh, like this is happening for a reason. I have to. I have to do something with this. Um, yeah, a lot of it was just because I needed work, but um, but yeah, yeah, it's just sort of the beginning of this. I feel like I haven't really made all that many pieces for myself. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just crazy because it just looks, um, it's just there, you know? It's like, uh, sorry, I keep, you know, you don't mean to over it, but it, you know, it's, it's just <laughs> I like, it. It re I like I, I mean, I see something and I just like, oh wow, this is like really cool. Um, well, you know, obviously I'm like really excited to see how all this stuff turns out. And if you do have a show, I definitely want to come. Um, sure. Just one little bite I wanted to tack on. What's your like relationship with social media? Oh, it's like a, like a love-hate thing. I think it's, it's one of those things where I feel like 
nowadays you have to have it as for for work I get work from it yeah um, right. I use it as a portfolio um, and then I put stuff on my stories just for fun I don't yeah, know there's something sure. about maybe well you, I guess yeah I mean with any love hate relationship you really have to uh, seek to find the like fun stuff in it to keep it going right? sure and there's like there's funny videos on there and I, I get to keep I get to keep up with people that wouldn't normally like know what they're doing in their lives have um, you ever had like an unhealthy relationship with them? Um, yeah, I think for sure it's like a time suck, you yeah. know? I've like spent hours on it. We're just scrolling. Do you do nothing. anything to mitigate that? Nowadays, yeah, I just don't really, I try not to check it. I just don't look on it. And then I'll, and I don't post a lot on it. I feel like when I when I do post something, that's when I'm on it the most, because I'm like, who's liking this? You know? Oh, really? You think yeah, I like to like, I don't know, there's something, maybe it's like psychological, it's just like, it's like an endorphin, like, oh, someone liked it. I don't know, I feel like I'd get that satisfaction it's out of it. Dangerous, yeah. It is dangerous. I, I find that really yeah. dangerous. Yeah. I, wish, I wish that that feature didn't exist on Instagram. I think that's how they keep people on it, though. Yeah. It is literally like the addictive part of it. It's like, it's like a video game. Like, oh, I'm getting likes, I'm getting followers. Yeah. If, it didn't ha if that wasn't visible to everyone, I think it would have a completely different it was just like Juice. a gallery or something. It would be like a gallery, yeah. And it, it would it wouldn't be like this weird. I don't I don't I don't have any like like I don't put self worth in my Instagram followers. I really don't at all. But I think a lot of people do. And I yeah, think that yeah. if that wasn't visible, I think maybe would people have like a healthier relationship with social media. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it's it's really difficult to um, detach your self-worth from it. I mean, it's so great. I think especially for a generation like ours where we grew up with it, we're almost like guinea pigs, you know? Like totally. we had to, because you know, I found, you were mentioning that you don't check it very often and stuff. Like I've, I've had to put in roadblocks for myself. What do you do? They have like that like timer thing. I tried that. Um, and I, just I, 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 made, I made like a very serious uh, change recently. Because, yeah, I mean, it, it's the kind of thing that it just gets away from you. You know, you just yeah. start and it's like, oh shit. For sure. Uh, Are you talking, like, I, I think I probably spend, you can, now you can, like, check or whatever. I think it's like an hour a day I spend on it. Which is a long time. It, it's a reflex for me. Mm. In in the lulls of my day, Sure. I just you pull flip it open without even thinking. And yeah. I feel like that's really destructive because it's it creates, I mean, you know, I have nothing novel to say about this. This is obviously people have been researching all this shit, but it's, you know, it's like you, you never get a chance to take a break. There's always like some kind of stimulation. So I did take a pretty drastic measure because like a lot of other people, you know, it takes a toll on your, on your mental health and the way that you see yourself. For sure. So I actually, I deleted off my phone, but I also recognize the need to have it. I think it's important for a lot of reasons. I want to a business card even, you know, it's just a way for really getting content. I, I think it's good to get um, I'm trying to not so much post more, but become more open to the idea. I mean, even something like this interview, like putting myself out there, because I think it's important to get critique and just get some kind of, I mean, even if not, like just putting it out there is, yeah. not to sound dramatic, pretty brave. Like for, you know, for some people it's courageous, like I'm yeah. gonna put something out and I don't know what's gonna happen. And, yeah. You know, like you were saying, like you have this impulse to, Okay, but I actually, I bought another phone. <laughs> I, bought, I, I bought a second, like, old iPhone. So you can't get on the... All the social media is on that iPhone. I keep it in the drawer, off, and I, I, you know, try to look at it, like, once a day. I have to turn it on. Most of the time, it's not charged. So there's a, there's a lot it of... It makes it more of a process. It's not as at your fingers. Yeah, and if it's, like, dead, and I want to, like, lay on, lay on my bed or something, I'll be like, yeah, fuck it. I want to do it anyway. And, I, and I, you know, I, I've learned... Um, I've been told that to build a routine, you have to do it for two weeks, mm -hmm. and it takes, I think, a similar amount to break a routine too. Sure. So yeah, I try to, you know, I try to minimize it. But I do, you know, I, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of benefits. Like I like keeping in touch with friends and all that stuff. Me too. I think it's, I think it's important to, to do that. But the drastic measures, like, I, <laughs> it, but it's <laughs> worked. Smart. Dude. It's, it's worked. That, and that's like, a great idea. The phone was like a hundred bucks. Um, yeah, and I took everything off. I blocked it like on my Safari browser on my regular phone. So you can't even. So on your regular phone, you can't access it. Yeah, and it's. I notice because it's so glaring now. 
because it's like this is blocked and it's like oh shit I forgot you know and I just remember like I wasn't even thinking about it, it was right like, it's just good like, uh, yeah yeah well thanks a lot man I of course you know I really Thank appreciate you. it again and I'm really excited to see how this goes I'd like to keep talking to you about some other stuff so we'll just cut here you know use the restroom and stuff and get some more tea um, but sure. thanks again and of course we'll see each other I guess in LA hell yeah dude come out yeah well I won't you know if you have the show I'm gonna fly out Dude, I'm pretty, are you kidding me? That would be amazing. Yeah. I'll let you know. I gotta figure all that out. For sure. Thanks, dude. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, man. I love this guy. Uh, Wells and I met, I think it was about 10 years ago, working in American Apparel in Berkeley, and we never got all that close, but we were always nice to each other when we saw each other at parties and stuff like that. I'm glad that feeling sustained uh, because despite not being that close, uh, we got to know each other pretty quickly and learned that we're very similar in our creative outlook. Our little interview seems to have given our acquaintanceships a little bit more depth and I'm looking forward to seeing how his work progresses in the future. Uh, before I get to the highlights, I just wanted to commend Wells for showing up. We met a few days before recording this interview when I asked him to speak with me on camera, he was hesitant. He's not the first to admit it and since starting this project I've quickly had to learn how to grow accustomed to rejection because of my decision to videotape all my interviews. But when Wells and I talked a little bit more he admitted that despite his anxiety about doing it, it might be helpful to do something outside of his comfort zone. Embracing the discomfort in action. Say what you will about the interview, but I think we both got something out of it. And in the end, Wells left with a smile on his face. So make of that what you will. And second, just a little note, um, the day we recorded was kind of gloomy and rainy. And to be candid, I felt a little off. I didn't feel like my usual kind of sociable self. I'm not sure if that reflected on camera, but I felt the brain fog clouding my inquisitive intuition. In any case, I've... After, learn, after I learned the uh, mic recordings failed, I totally spiraled into like a three-day depression. It's always a battle, and despite my efforts to learn to handle situations like this in a healthier way, sometimes the feelings of failure are overwhelming. But I, I'll tell you what I did. Instead of chastising myself, I laid around, let the feeling be. It took a while, but it passed, and during that time I got a break I didn't realize I desperately needed. Now I'm back in the saddle. So a few points I wanted to highlight. I'm so captivated by stories like Wells's. The way he discovered embroidery, the serendipity of it is so poetic. At first, just a job to pay the bills, turns into bringing his paintings in just to see what it would look like while he was bored during downtime. And then boom, he's found a medium that speaks to him that he gravitates to. And not to say he's bound to working in it, but it seems like something that is creatively fulfilling, galvanizing him to continue and aspire to do his first show. Despite not liking the work, it was through doing it that he learned to round out his skills and discover how to express something novel. I think there's something to be said about trying something new when you're bored, you know? If you're a musician and you're not feeling like picking up the guitar, pick up a pencil and draw something. I don't know. See what happens. Uh, we also brushed on this idea of making things for other people that I wanted to briefly mention. I believe it could be useful if you're feeling like you don't know what to do conceptually or if you're feeling stuck. To reframe your goal and make something for someone else as a gift or a tribute and use that to lead you to the next idea. What a simple but brilliant idea. I mean, I know that's worked for me in the past, making gifts, you know, kind of thing. The pressure to make something meaningful for yourself is suddenly one step removed and you might be able to explore ideas or mediums without the pressure of having to impress yourself. Uh, this next point I think is incredibly important. Making art, whether you're getting paid or not, is still work and you should treat it as such. For example, despite not getting paid, I get up and write every day on my quote unquote days off. I spend most of the day writing or working on the showroom, you know, making music on those days as well. So. After several weeks of not taking a break, burnout is inevitable, and it's important to engage in a little self-care, you know. For me, it's laying around and doing absolutely nothing while I watch TikTok all day long. In my shorts and tank top, and I just laze around. It's, it's good. Take a, take a vacation when you, when you can. Uh, if you want longevity, take it at least as seriously as a regular job. 
having a day dedicated to working on something or a couple hours or whatever. And remember, you know, not to try to put too much pressure on yourself to actually do anything. It's a delicate balance. Finally, I love how Wells' first point of success when I asked him, you know, do you feel successful, was his relationships in his life. Nothing to do with art, but so inexplicably interwoven into what we do. Support is key. The value of investing time in your relationships, whether romantic or platonic, is so often understated. It's truly amazing how much work it takes to build deep bonds with people and to create a community. If you have that, give yourself a pat on the back. I know how much effort it takes to grow meaningful relationships. And if you don't, nothing wrong with that, but whatever the hurdle, whether creative or just the little life events that happen to us, life is truly easier with a little help from your friends. Cheesy, I know, but it's, it's true. Thanks again for listening. And if you want to hear the second half of my conversation with Wells, where we talk about tattoos, photography, and some other stuff, um, or if you just like the session and want to support the show, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You can listen to the second part of all the creative bear hug interviews, as well as get access to the music featured in the show. And I don't know, some other stuff. I'm working on it as I go. All of the relevant links are in the notes. Peace. Peace.